this class we will discuss about the phasor estimation techniques. Uh, one of the phasor estimation techniques is uh, DFT that is the discrete Fourier transform and uh, already we have discussed that uh, in case of PMU the main phasor estimation technique that is used is the DFT. So, that is why in this particular class uh, we will discuss about it uh, what is that and how to write it and what are the mathematical formulation and we will also do one assignment if we will take some sample data. So, how to calculate the phase angle uh, or the magnitude of the voltage current using the DFT. Now, as far as the phasor is concerned, how to define a phasor? If you will say this V A phasor, so it has a magnitude and also it has angle. So, this two together the magnitude part is the magnitude part and this is our angle part. So, magnitude and angle together forms form the phasor. Now, one more point we have to also keep in mind when we call about this phasor, we will talk about the phasor, the frequency is also important. This fundamental frequency if it is 50 hertz, so at what frequency this particular uh, phasor is calculated that is also important. As far as the magnitude and phase angle both are concerned, if you will vary this frequency then their corresponding values are going to be changed. So, that is why at particular frequency the magnitude and phase angle together count as the phasor. If you this see this particular picture here we have taken one V m one phasor position at t is equal to 0 and you can see this is the rotational plane and this is our sinusoidal plane that uh, along x axis we have taken this time axis this is t and here is our magnitude v m and this is how this uh, t 0 starts from t 0 means it is the starting point of the phasor. Now, when this phasor rotates at certain frequency as we have discussed this is angular speed that is omega is equal to 2 pi f 2 pi stands for 360 degree and this is our uh, frequency that is 50 hertz. So, this uh, angular frequency this uh, radian per second so it rotates and from t equal to 0 uh, let us say it starts from uh, t equal to 0 here. So, this is a position of t equal to 0 this is a position of the phasor and when this uh, phasor rotates and it reaches to t equal to t 0 and the corresponding phasor position is here it is t equal to 0. That means, this is the starting point so, let us say this is the another point. So, if further it moves away let us say t is equal t 1 is equal to t 0 dash. So, obviously, so it will come to another point in the t axis along the t axis. So, this particular phasor position which is shown here and here together all together equal. Now, to represent the position we took also sometimes this real axis this is our real axis and this is our imaginary axis. If I want to this uh, decompose this particular phasor it is a complex number basically it is a complex number and which has like uh, provides the RMS value of the signal and angle provides the instantaneous position of the signal. At what angle this signal is rotating at particular time uh, stamp we can always access it. That is what uh, this real axis will tell the real part of this particular phasor and this imaginary axis will just say what is the imaginary part of the signal that is basically the complex form of representation of the phasor quantities phasors. Now, if I will just write here this V a phi a, so how to write in complex form? This will be V a cos phi a plus j V a magnitude, so this is magnitude V a magnitude and then sin of phi a. So, this is our the real part and this is our imaginary part. So, along this real axis we can take how much uh, this uh, real component and along this imaginary axis we can take the real uh, imaginary component taking the resultant. So, finally, we will get this V a magnitude. 
that is what is the complex form of the phasor. And also sometimes we represent in terms of like exponential form also in polar form. So, there are three forms uh, basically we follow to represent the discrete Fourier I mean the phasors. The first one is this is our polar form, this is our rectangular form and this particular signal also can be written this V a phasor also is equal to V a this magnitude e to the power j phi a. This is our exponential form. Now, uh, this uh, DFT discrete Fourier transform is uh, one of the signal processing techniques which is used to estimate the phases of the voltage and current signal. Let us say we have uh, three phase voltages, three phase currents. So, if we have this one phase voltage and again another phase voltage with 120 degree apart, also we have current phase. Let us say this is V A and this is I A and this is all instantaneous with respect to time we took it. So, this is small V A t and this is small i a t. Similarly, we have uh, like uh, other phase voltages and other phase currents. So, what this d f t this this stands for the abbreviation is d f t. The d f t helps in providing the magnitude and phase angle of corresponding voltage and angle. If you see how it will be if it is 5 volt the signal is of plus minus minus 5 volt voltage signal. Now, we will expect that DFT will provide a magnitude curve like this with respect to time. Now, similarly what will be the angle information? The angle will just rotate within 180 degree repeat. So, this is 180 degree 360, 180 degree 360. So, within a cycle this is one complete cycle of the angle like this. So, this magnitude this is the magnitude of the signal and this is the angle of the signal. So, this magnitude angle we are interested to extract using this DFT of this particular signal sinusoidal signal voltage and current uh, which are basically the power system. I am just talking about in terms of uh, like uh, PMU or relaying practice or relaying field. You will see in the subsequent slides uh, for protection approach uh, in case of uh, digital relays, uh, the phasor of uh, phasors of the voltage and current are very, very important because uh, when the relays are uh, basically sequence component based relays, in some cases we use the positive sequence component of the voltage or current or we can use the negative sequence or zero sequence components of the voltage and current. So, in that case to calculate the sequence components, so we need the phasors of the voltage and current. So, that is why in case of relays also we need some phasor estimation techniques and just uh, way we need in PMUs. Let us start with uh, this mathematical expression of this DFT, this V k is equal to 2 by n summation of n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 v n e to the power minus j 2 pi k small n by capital N. Let us define what are this uh, symbols. What is this k? The k is the it is the order of the harmonic order of the harmonic harmonic signal present with the fundamental one with the fundamental fundamental signal. So, as already we have discussed in power network we have a fundamental signal also we have harmonic signals. So, this harmonics are coming due to the presence of electronic devices or nonlinear loads also we have. So, due to that we have harmonic signals which are present along with our fundamental signal. But remember uh, for our uh, further processing using this phasor measurement unit or digital relays, we need the fundamental component of the voltage or current signal not the harmonic. Yes, of course, in some cases uh, intentionally we compute 
the harmonic components of the voltage current signal for our uh, purpose. In some cases, some like if you uh, just recall in your BTEC level, we studied the uh, second harmonic restrained uh, differential relays or some uh, in second harmonic component is also used for protecting the uh, transformer. In some cases also you we need nowadays in advanced uh, protection strategies we need some harmonic signals to analyze some protection issues. So, intentionally we also calculate this uh, frequency harmonic components for our application control or protection purpose. So, here this K stands for the order of the harmonic present in the fundamental signal and uh, this N capital N stands for number of samples per cycle. So, we have discussed in our WAMS technology class that uh, we sample the signals at particular sampling frequency. The sampling frequency we stands for F s is equal to our sampling our sampling frequency. So, if our fundamental frequency is our fundamental frequency is 50 hertz. So, our fundamental time period will be 20 millisecond this is basically 1 upon 50. So, these are the symbols we have to consider and also here sometimes we write T s the sampling time period that is 1 upon F s. So, these are the symbols we use for our uh, discrete Fourier transform analysis. Now, this capital N is the number of samples per cycle and this V n sometimes also in some cases it is written small v n. This small v n is our sample values of the signal. Suppose, one signal we have uh, sampled at particular sampling frequency, if this is my analog signal and the corresponding samples I just reconstructed here. So, this sample values we call it this is our time axis and this is my small v t and this signal is basically the analog analog signal. And if I will just uh, sample down this analog signal, so we will get the digitalized or discretized signals. So, this is known as discretized discretized signal that is in discrete time domain. I can write here k t this is at certain time interval we are basically uh, sampling it. So, we call it k t s this uh, small t is represented by k t s and along this y axis we have v small n small v n. Now, this n stands for the number of samples we have taken for a particular period. If I took uh, like uh, 2 seconds, so for 1 second 1000 samples if I will take sampling frequency as 1 kilohertz. So, if it will be 2 seconds if I will consider, so there are uh, 200 samples per 2 seconds. So, if my sampling frequency is 1 kilohertz. So, in that sense 20 samples per cycle is our number of samples that is n and this T stands for k T s because let us say this n is equal to 1 or k is equal to 1 here sometimes also we took it n T s also the position of the sample this n stands for position of the sample when n is equal to 2. So, here is our n is equal to 1 or k is equal to 1 this is 2 T s and this position is 3 T s and this position is 4 T s 5 T s so on. That means, uh, the point here is that uh, the number of uh, samples positions should be indicated in discrete domain not in continuous time domain. This is a continuous time domain signal and this is a discretized uh, time domain signal that is why the name is discrete Fourier transform. And in discrete Fourier transform the name transform means we are transferring this particular discretized signal to a frequency domain. This is time domain, this one is discretized signal in time domain, discrete time domain and we are converting to a frequency domain signal because we are going to calculate the phasors. The phasors means the frequency domain is must, 
we should know at what frequency we are going to calculate the RMS value of the signal and phase angle of the signal. So, that is why this uh, this is how this this is our discretized time domain signal and we are converting to this uh, frequency domain signal for calculating the magnitude and phase angle. Now, if you see that uh, another term here it is uh, as I said that small n that is our number of uh, the position of the sample in a particular string and uh, this lies the same small n lies between 0 to n minus 1 for this case because uh, we are discussing a full cycle discrete Fourier transform. There are different types of DFT, the full cycle DFT, half cycle DFT, cosine DFT, sine DFT. So, in that case we are first discussing the full cycle discrete Fourier transform. Now, if we decompose this uh, above factor this equation we have real part and also we have imaginary part. This 2 by n summation of n equal to 0 to n minus 1 v n this is small v n into this sin 2 pi small n by capital N. This is one expression and this is our imaginary part expression, this is our real part expression. Now, in this case this k is considered as 1. Why? When this k is equal to 1, it stands for the fundamental frequency component. When k is equal to 2, so it will just provide us the phasor value of the second harmonic component of the signal. If k is equal to 3, so it will provide the third harmonic component of the signal, the phasor value of the third harmonic component of the signal. That means so on. So, this uh, we can vary this k according to our requirement, but for this case we are considering the fundamental component of the signal. After knowing this uh, imaginary part and real part, uh, so real and imaginary square if we take, so we will get the magnitude and the tan inverse of this imaginary to real part, so we will get the phase angle of the corresponding voltage or let us say current if you want. So, we have to also decompose the current in that manner, we will have the real part imaginary part and then squaring together we will get the magnitude and also phase angle. This is one table, uh, you can take it as an assignment uh, that how to calculate this particular signal that uh, this x i sometimes we can also write it x i or this is small x n or uh, uh, this discretized signal n basically n stands here the sample position 1, 2, this is equal to 3, n is equal to 4 and so on. We have number of sample positions. This is the first sample, this is second sample, this is third sample, fourth sample and so on. Now, if you could remember in previous part, uh, the real part is cos 2 pi n by capital N, keeping this k is equal to 1. If you put this, so this will be our, these are the corresponding magnitudes and similarly, this is our imaginary part sin of 2 pi n divided by n. So, when we when will calculate this i or n, we can replace it whatever you like, this n equal to 1. So, this is the corresponding value. When this uh, uh, this i is equal to or n is equal to 1, so this is the corresponding value and here you should put n is equal to 20, because the sampling frequency we have mentioned here 1 kilo hertz, this is 1 kilo hertz. So, so these are uh, after getting this cosine factor sine factor, then we will multiply the corresponding x n value with the sin and cosine factor. And finally, we will take if I will just denote this total factor as a and this total factor as b. So, this summation of a let us say is equal to a 1, summation of b is equal to b 1 in either way we will write. Now, this uh, magnitude is equal to is equal to a 1 square plus b 1 square root over and angle part of this signal is equal to tan inverse of b 1 upon a 1. So, this is one kind of assignment you can take it and you can calculate the corresponding magnitude and angle. 
here we will go for half cycle DFT. In case of half cycle DFT, uh, we basically go for half of the sample values. Let us say in a uh, sample string, we have 20 samples, n stands for 1, n stands 2 up to n is equal to 20. So, if we will take total 20 number of samples that is n capital N is equal to 20 and if we consider the whole num I mean samples 20 number of samples and we calculate the DFT then the DFT known as full cycle DFT. If I will take only 10 samples up to 10 when n is equal to 10 then in that case the DFT is known as half cycle half cycle DFT that is what is mentioned here. In that case only the difference will be in case of number of samples. If you just go back to the previous expression of the full cycle DFT, here we wrote n minus 1. In this case, the number of samples start number of samples starts starts from n is equal to 0 to n minus 1. But here in this case, the number of samples starts from n equal to 0 to n by 2 minus 1. So, we are taking here half of the samples. If 20 is the figure for uh, number of samples per cycle. So, here in this case we will take 10 samples per cycle, uh, half cycle not per cycle the half cycle 10 samples per half cycle. So, half cycle data or samples we will take. Now, as other things remains uh, remain constant other thing remain constant that is V n cos 2 pi small n by capital N and this is our uh, real part and this is our imaginary part. Here is uh, v n sin 2 pi small n by capital N. This is our imaginary part and here there is no change in n. Does not mean that here we will take n by 2 in place of n. No, here this n stands for number of samples per cycle. So, it is not necessary, uh, it is not required to take this n here. If we will take this uh, magnitude and phase formula, it is same as previously we did for the DFT. You can see here in case of DFT, here we have taken the same. Now, coming to this uh, another part that is a cosine transform of the DFT that is uh, cosine part of the uh, signal that is 2 by n, n stands from 0 to n by 2 minus 1 and here we have V n small v n and cos 2 pi small n by capital N. Now, this is the real part of this particular signal. What about the imaginary part? If I do not know the imaginary part, then how to calculate it? It is in this way, if this is my real, real part and this will be my imaginary part. What I will do here? If I will put n minus capital N by 4, so I will get the imaginary part of the signal that is the sign part of the signal. because the difference between this if I know cos theta then how to know the sin theta then just uh, making minus of minus of n by 4 points 1 quarter signal or minus 90 degree sin of 90 minus theta is equal to cos theta. So, in that case let us say I have one string of data n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3 let us some values we have. 8.2 or 8.6, 8 8.3, uh, 8 n is equal to 4, n is equal to 5, some values arbitrary values I am just writing n is equal to 6, I say this is uh, 9 or 9.1. So, these are the sample values and so on it goes up to n is equal to 20 because we are discussing about uh, this 20 samples per cycle data. Now, the question is if this is my cosine part, so how to make it the sine part? From the same data, I will construct my signal. So, this is like this if I am here, let us say uh, n is equal to 4. So, how to make the particular sample for this V c n minus n by 4? So, from where I should start? If this is that means n is equal to now it is 4, that n minus n by 4 means n small n minus 20 divided by 4 that is 4 if I will come like number of samples 
I have 20 by 4. So, fourth before uh, the fifth point before 4 points I have to move n by 4 means fifth point here it is. If I have the signal here is my n by 4 and here is my n by 2 and here is my n stands. So, number of samples here is n by 4 and here n by 2 and here is n this is 20 number of samples here it is 10 and here it is 5 here starts from the 1. Now, that means I have to start I have to start from here n is equal to 6 because I have to go back 5 samples. So, here is my n minus n by 4 that is uh, 6 minus 5 that is equal to 1. So, this sample should be taken into consideration. If I am starting from here n is equal to 6 and this is for my real part real part sample value and so for imaginary part my sample position will be 1 and this 8.2 is the corresponding sample value. If I will just want to write here for n is equal to 6, so it should be 8.2 plus j 9.1 and so on. So, if I will take n is equal to 7, so my let us say this this is for n c n and this c this part will be n dash is equal to. So, the 7 minus this 5 it will be 2. So, that means it will just keep on sliding this is 7th position. So, here it will be my real imaginary part if it will be 8. So, the Im the real imaginary part will be 3 and if it is 9 then it will be 4 and so on. So, that means if I know a string of data it is not necessary to calculate the sign part from the cosine part from the same uh, symbol we can always calculate the real part as well as the imaginary part to find the magnitude and phase angle of the signal. Now, we will go for the discrete Fourier transform part this is the DFT we have discussed in case of DFT we have full cycle DFT we have uh, half cycle DFT we saw we have cosine DFT. Now, we will discuss about the discrete Fourier, Fourier transform in recursive manner. What is a recursive DFT and why we are interested for this recursive DFT? In case of uh, recursive DFT one advantage is well uh, we will just calculate in a windowing manner. What is the window word first we will discuss then we will go for recursive DFT. If this is one sinusoidal signal where I have taken two cycles and I just want to calculate the corresponding magnitude phase angle recursively not iteratively it is recursively it will move this is my first window which is having 20 samples per cycle. It starts the n starts from 1 and it ends with 20. Now, next window will move to the another label this is n is equal to 2 and n is equal to ending 1 is 21 so on. That means, uh, we this window is moving inside the uh, signal and making taking 1 1 uh, cycles and 20 samples per cycle and it moves ahead it moves ahead and this kind of um, movement is known as windowing approach or window approach of the in calculating the phases of the signal. Now, if it is so then if uh, for this particular first window we have quite particular magnitude of the signal and corresponding angle also will be here. Similarly, for the second window we will have some magnitude point here and the angle point here and so on. So, if you we'll just see then corresponding angle the magnitude will be like this and the corresponding angle goes on like this. So, we will see this particular picture in more uh, clarity the next PPT or slide. Now, this is our first window this is second window. So, now we will come to the recursive DFT part that with using this recursive DFT we can minimize the time of computation. In DFT if we will just every time we are going to this let us say this is the window 1 for this we will calculate the DFT and the corresponding magnitude and phase angle we will calculate. Similarly, the second window also will apply DFT and we will calculate the corresponding magnitude and angle. So, it is time consuming affair every time we are computing the 
imaginary part, the real part and again the magnitude and phase angle. So, we are again if you could remember our table. So, this kind of computation is uh, happening every time. So, this cos theta sin theta part then this uh, x i into cos theta x i into sin theta this computation computations are compulsory. So, every time for every window we are de de doing this the computer is doing the same exercise time to time. Now, but what will happen to remove this to avoid this kind of uh, computation for every window. So, we will just uh, do one technique that is known as recursive DFT. In this case only once the DFT will be calculated for the first window. What we will do here? We will just calculate the DFT for the first window and subsequent windows will not we are not going to calculate the DFT anymore. The first DFT will be utilized to calculate the magnitude and phase angle of the second window or 20 samples per cycle data. And similarly for the next window we will take the help of previous window magnitude and phase angle and then we will proceed and so on. So, this kind of uh, approach is known as recursive DFT in this manner we can save the computational time which is basically happening in case of discrete Fourier transformer and where we are calculating the DFT for every window for finding the magnitude and phase angle of the signal. Now, this is how this uh, samples of uh, 20 samples per cycle uh, here 20 samples here it starts from 1 and it ends with uh, 20 and this is the magnitude part and this is the angle part. You can see here how this angles are varying this is here 1 cycle 20 here at this point and here another cycle angle varies like this. If you will just calculate the angle between two samples at this point it will be 18 degree because we have uh, 20 samples angle is basically 360 degree 360 degree by 20. So, it is going to be 18 degree. So, between two samples the angle difference is 18 degree that is like this. So, for every if you will take a window kind of uh, pros this is my first window up to 20th first window and this will be our second window where it will start from n is equal to this is n is equal to 1 to n is equal to 20 and next window will start n is equal to 2 to n is equal to 21 and similarly and the third window will be like this and so on. This window will keep on progressing or going ahead proceeding ahead to find the corresponding magnitude and phase angle. For this first window for the first window this is the magnitude and this is the corresponding angle and for the second window this is the corresponding magnitude and this is the corresponding angle and for third window this is the third window this is the magnitude and this is the corresponding angle and so on. So, when this window ends within a cycle so, this is the end of this particular angle or this is the end of corresponding magnitude. Now, we will come to this mathematical expression of this recursive DFT or recursive discrete Fourier transform that here this V the capital V R plus 1 is equal to capital V R into this e to the power j 2 pi by n plus 2 by n small v. So, this is small v small r plus capital N minus small v r into e to the power j 2 pi by n. Now, I want, I want to explain this particular expression clearly so that we will understand. So, what is the dif basic difference between this recursive DFT and the only DFT. Now, if you could see what is this uh, capital V r plus 1. If I have a signal as already we have discussed in the previous slide that uh, this particular signal is moving ahead and this is my first window and this is my second window. So, this arbitrarily let us say I can start from any window my uh, for calculating my phases. Let us say this is my rth window that is what the meaning of this r small r. If I will take this is the say last next window. So, this will be r plus 1 window. Now, this for this particular window r plus 1. So, that will be this will be my phasor v r plus 1. 
Now, how to express this? This V r is the previous window DFT value. So, what is this V r? The V r is the DFT, one cycle DFT, one cycle DFT of rth window data sample. Data sample, this data may be uh, we have voltage data or we may have current data. Now, this uh, rth window data sample DFT is V r, this is capital V r into this j 2 pi by n. Why this j 2 pi by n? Between the two windows, the difference between this angle difference is how much? 2 pi by n that is 18 degree. If we will take n is uh, 20, 20 samples per cycle. And what about the second term? We have two terms. The first term is basically the DFT of the first window and the second term is what? The difference between the new sample and the outgoing sample. This is the magnitude part of this particular sample and this is the angle part. We have to multiply the angle also. Now, this uh, what is this new sample in this case? If you consider this is my the window just I may I will make it in a different shape. You can understand easily that this dashed line is my earth window and uh, the solid one the solid one is the corresponding new window. We are moving from old window to new window. So, of course, when you will move from one window to first uh, one window to other window. So, within consecutive window we have one old uh, sample is going to be rejected and new sample is going to be entered. So, in this case if you will see that uh, this is how this window ends here and this is the my this was my last sample and this is a new sample which is entered inside. If we will tell like this, this 20 first n is equal to 1 to 20 and next n is equal to 2 to 21. Now, this one sample the first sample is discarded and the 21th sample is entered to the fresh window that is what the meaning of new sample and outgoing sample and the name is like this. The new sample I can write V r plus n and this is my outgoing sample. Okay. So, if this r is equal to 1 then if n is equal to 20. So, this 1 plus 20 that is basically 21 is the my new sample and 1 is the old sample. So, old sample is discarded and the new sample is entered to the window. The difference between these two magnitude sample values in magnitude. So, this difference between these two basically is the uh, difference I mean the what gap exist exist between the two samples new sample and the old sample and multiplying this angle will get the phasor information. Now, the question comes the between these two samples the information the gap will be 0 throughout unless until any, dist any disturbance is going to be incepted. In fact, the first sample is basically similar to the 20th sample of the next window. The first sample is uh, just similar to my 21st sample of the next window. The difference is basically 0, but when any fault occurs, when any fault occurs or any disturbance occurs, now the signal magnitude increases to another level. Now, the difference if you will see the this window moves on, but however, when the moon when the window moves or uh, it uh, reaches within this uh, changed uh, signal uh, part, then it will see some difference between these two samples. The new sample and the old sample difference will be significant when this window will reach within the disturbance area. This is our disturbed area or I can clearly I can show here this is my signal before the disturbance and this is a signal after the disturbance. Let us current magnitude has been increased to another level after the disturbance. Now, this window will keep on moving and when this window moves inside the disturbance area now there is a basically significant change between these two samples. Now, uh, this is another part which is known as uh, frequency error analysis in DFT and uh, before going to that uh, let us uh, just uh, give some remark on this recursive DFT that in case of recursive DFT we observed that uh, only we have to calculate the DFT once uh, this is our for this VR and the rest of the window for the rest of the window we are not going to calculate the DFT uh, time to time 
just taking this second expression we can just add to the DFT value of the previous window. So, that we can calculate the DFT of next window. So, in this manner the recursive DFT saves the time and also in computational wise it is quick and we can save the time that is our aim of this recursive DFT. Coming to the error uh, analysis that is a frequency error analysis as we are uh, operating in the frequency domain as far as the DFT or recursive DFT are concerned the operation is frequency domain. Now, if the frequency of the system varies than the nominal values let us say we have 50 hertz if the frequency varies something like 49.5 or 49.8 hertz or sometimes it increases to 50.1 or 50.2. So, in that case how this magnitude and phase angle which are calculated using the DFT or recursive DFT they are going to be affected that is what the frequency error analysis. To have this uh, we have certain steps mathematically and we have to understand it. Uh, here is the first signal we have taken step 1, this is step 1 we have taken one instantaneous signal that is x t in time domain where the signal is expressed like this it is x capital X is the magnitude of the signal cos omega t plus phi it is a cosine function this phi is the phase angle of the signal with respect to certain reference. And this small x k is the signal in discrete domain that is small x still exist this is in analog or uh, infinite that is a continuous time domain and this small x k is the signal in discretized time domain. And only the difference here is in place of t this small t we have to replace k t s that is a difference as already we have discussed that for a signal if it is in time domain t and in discrete domain when you will just convert this small t will be replaced by k t s. The signals uh, samples are basically sampled at s within a certain interval. So, this dis distance is basically k t s this t s is the sampling time interval within two samples consecutive samples the time gap is basically known as t s. Now, let this particular signal again we will write x e to the power j we will just uh, denote uh, x small x bar is treated as capital X into e to the power j phi. Now, by rewriting this x t in exponential form like we will just decompose like cos theta is equal cos e to the power j theta plus cos e to the power minus j theta divided by 2. So, in that form we will write x as this is the theta omega t plus phi. So, first one x will be e to the power j omega t plus phi plus e, e to the power minus j omega t plus phi. As we have already taken just uh, by decomposing this e to the power j omega t into e to the power j phi plus e to the power minus j omega t into e to the power minus j phi. Now, in place of this if we we'll multiply x with all together x. So, this expression can be written as we have abbreviated here x small x bar the small x bar into rest of the term e to the power j omega t. Now, let us say uh, f naught is our nominal frequency and due to the sum disturbance we have a frequency deviation than our nominal frequency that is let us say that is delta f this delta f is the frequency deviation and uh, in that case uh, how to write it what is the frequency change in frequency that will be f naught plus delta f earlier it was f naught now this f naught dash is equal to f naught plus minus del f this frequency deviation when we added or it may be subtracted. Now, if by considering this omega s with the changed frequency scenario this x r can be rewritten this is how our uh, expression was for the previous uh, expression like uh, we have a DFT if you could remember the DFT of a particular signal 2 by n k is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of k plus r e to the power minus 2 pi k by n. Now, what this uh, r stands for and k stands for already we have discussed capital N is the number of samples per cycle, but here this uh, r stands for for what window we are looking for 
rth window r plus 1 or r plus 2 and so on. Now, what about this k? k is basically the number of sample, sample position as if we have taken the previous case n small n. So, that this k stands for the sample position and this r small r stands for the window position a window number. Now, by keeping this in mind by keeping this mind. So, this x r can be written in this manner where this uh, small uh, this capital N can be written as T divided by T s. This is our formula because uh, T is basically 20 milliseconds and T s is equal to 1 milliseconds. So, how to get this number of samples the relationship between this capital T and T s is equal to 20 divided by 1 that is 20. That is how this n, t and t s are related to each other. Now, in place of capital T also we can put as 1 upon 1 upon f naught. After putting all this we will just get 2 upon n this x k plus r it is by minus j 2 by k by n and this is how our recursive DFT part I should not uh, discuss about this part because already we have discussed how to take the recursive DFT. This is the first window, rth window, and this is by r plus 1th window. If this is the DFT for my rth window, so this will be my DFT using the recursive concept for x plus r, r plus 1th window. Now, this is one other symbol we have will use here omega is equal to w, or you can say because omega is our radiant frequency small w e to the power j 2 pi by n. Now, by putting all this expression, so this will be my final expression for kth window signal. Now, you can see here that very clearly that uh, in this expression that this f naught plus delta f is uh, represented uh, here very clearly as far as the frequency deviation is concerned. And that is why if previously if you could see here our expression was uh, here that the, the frequency for this case was f naught only, but now in this case the expression is f naught plus delta f. So, as if this is the case, so obviously the magnitude of this particular x of plus r 1 this magnitude and also the phase angle are going to be affected because the frequency has been deviated from the nominal values. This is how this uh, this is for uh, recursively if you are running this i stands for one recursive window if you will just code this uh, mathematical equations. So, slowly you will find the window will move ahead using this i this is basically a for loop case type. So, this is my signal if it is so on moving now this window will keep on moving one by one this is how it will just move ahead. So, if we will just move ahead then we will find the corresponding magnitude and the corresponding angle also already we have discussed this. Now, the question here is due to this frequency deviation you can see here due to this frequency deviation let us say we got some magnitude with f is equal f naught is equal to 50 hertz. Now, we will get some deviation in the magnitude part if f naught dash is equal to either 50.1 or with some this uh, f naught dash is equal to 49.5 or 49.8 whatever the frequency deviation. That means, the difference between these two magnitudes are basically errors. If my frequency is deviating from 50 hertz to another frequency value that deviation is basically the error in terms of like maybe it is in magnitude part or also in the angle part. So, this is how uh, today our class we did uh, we have discussed the one of the important phasor estimation techniques that is uh, the DFT discrete Fourier transform and again also we have discussed recursive DFT that is recursive uh, discrete Fourier transform and also we have analyzed the frequency error part uh, which is going to be happen in our magnitude and phase angle case. Thank you all.